today we're going to be going over some of my favorite historical fiction books. This has been a highly recommended video and I feel like it's a really great video because I don't see historical fiction talked about as much on booktube and definitely not on like book talk, a little bit on bookstagram, but I am a huge lover of historical fiction. I love history in general. I love listening to history podcasts. I was a history minor in school and I read a lot of historical fiction. So I thought I'd go through my top six young adult historical fiction books and my top six adult historical fiction books today. Let's start with the young adult books. The first one is one of the most famous young adult historical fiction books out there and it is Between Shades of Grey by Ruth Sethetes. This has another title now because the original title and I have the original version was too close to 50 Shades of Grey. That new updated title is Ashes in the Snow. This book follows a teenage girl during World War II and she's from Lithuania and it's about kind of what life was like on the eastern front for civilians. It's a really interesting look on one of the war fronts that I feel like we don't get as much about when it comes to World War II. Like we always hear about the western front but we never hear as much about the Eastern Front, which was between the Germans and the Russians. The other book is by the same author, Ruth Sepetys. I'm probably mispronouncing her last name, and it is Salt to the Sea. This book takes place in 1945, so right after World War II, and it is about a shipwreck and four refugees and their journey throughout this shipwreck. This is a super powerful book, and I didn't realize that the shipwreck had actually happened in real life, so that just made it even more fascinating. If you love stuff like the Titanic, you would definitely love this book. Next up is one that is a little bit happier and still just as famous and that is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. There's also the sequel, The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. These are LGBTQIA books that take place in the 1700s. The first book follows our main character as he goes on like his tour of Europe that rich British men used to go on in the 1700s. It's kind of like his last hurrah before he's expected to settle down and become a proper society man. It's really just a fun book. There's not very many many historical fictions that are as fun as this series. The third book in this series is coming out in October too, so it's the perfect time to start reading those two books so that you're ready for the third one in October. I had to include a young adult about one of my favorite figures in history, and that is Anastasia Romanoff. I love Romanoff history. I actually think I like Catherine the Great a little bit more than Anastasia, but I have yet to find a great young adult Catherine the Great fictional piece, but this is a really great piece about Anastasia, and it's called Anastasia's Secret by Susan Dunlap. If you don't know the story about Anastasia, her entire family was killed by the Bolsheviks during the Russian Revolution. Basically, there's been rumors throughout the entire 1900s that Anastasia somehow survived, and this book is kind of a historical fiction look at if she could have survived and what the royal family's last days were like before they were murdered. Next up, we have two books that are both historical fiction, but also include a touch of magic. The first one is The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. This one takes place during the Regency era England. I love Jane Austen, so obviously I love Regency era England. It is much darker than a Jane Austen novel. It's about a girl who goes to London after her parents die, but there's a seedy underside to London. The seedy underside of London might want her to be involved even if she doesn't. It's a super fun book. I love the combination of fantasy and history, Regency era, magic, what could be better? Finally, for young adult books, we have one that I am obsessed with, also involves a little bit of magic, and I feel like I've seen a little bit about this book, but not as much hype as it deserves. And that is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This book came out of November in 2020. These Violent Delights is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in Shanghai during the 1920s. So we have the Roaring Twenties energy. We have this really cool, very rich history about Shanghai and like imperialism in China. And of course we have the Romeo and Juliet story with a magical twist. Not only is it Romeo and Juliet, not only is it Roaring Twenties, I forgot to add that it also involves gangs and like gangs gangsters, not like gangs gangs, but like gangsters like Al Capone or like all those 1920s gangsters. This book is very tropey, which I really like. And so if you like that sort of stuff, this will be an enjoyable book. Now let's move on to the adult books. I'm not going to be mentioning Outlander by Diana Gabaldon because I feel like most people will know about that series. But if you don't and you're looking for some really romantic historical fiction, because these ones aren't as romantic, I highly recommend checking out that book. It is about 1700 Scotland and involves a time traveler from the 1940s. Again, there's so many videos out there about it. It's also a TV show. Highly recommend checking that out. These ones are not completely R-rated and 
still just as good about different periods of history. So the first one that we have here is Outlawed by Anna North. This one is about the Wild West and it kind of looks into what the life of woman was like in the Wild West. I didn't realize like just how repressive it was until I read this book. And it also includes a gang of female outlaws, which is definitely just awesome. It's a pretty short read too. So I definitely recommend picking it up if you're really into feminist history or just Wild Western history in general. The next one that we have is another feminist reclaiming almost. It's of a Greek myth and that's Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This book is so so beautifully written. It definitely is a little bit of a slower book, but I have had a hankering for anything Greek since I read this book because it was just so fascinating and so lovely and so well written. I cannot say enough good things about this book. Definitely recommend checking it out if you want to look at a more feminist retelling of the myth with the Minotaur. The next book I'm going to recommend also includes a little bit of magic and it goes back and forth between modern day times and the late 1700s and that's The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This book follows a woman in the late 1700s who has an apothecary where she uses witchcraft to help women in the town of London and a woman in modern day London who's visiting from America. It kind of shows how their two stories are intertwined. It's a really fascinating look about how history can impact the present, which is something that I personally love studying when I'm studying history. So this book is great. It also involves a lot of like the main characters also studying history. So if you're just a nerd about historical research, this would be a great one to pick up. After that, we have two books that are classics. This one's a modern classic about a time period that's earlier. And then the other book is a classic that was written in the 1920s, but about the Victorian era, which is a very interesting look at what historical fiction was like a century ago. So this first one is Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimaranda Ngozi Adichie. At one point in time, I knew how to pronounce her name, and now I definitely do not. Chimaranda Ngozi Adichie is a really famous Nigerian author. I adore her writing. This book in particular is very powerful. It's about Nigeria during the 1960s when there was a civil war going on. In Nigeria. I learned a lot about Nigerian history that I never knew before. To be honest, because American history is so focused on America and Europe, I might never have learned about this history if I hadn't read this book. The last book is one I mentioned that was a historical fiction that was written in the 1920s about the Victorian era, historical fiction from a century ago, and that is The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. I adore this book. Other than Jane Austen, this book might be my favorite classic of all time. I love Edith Wharton. She is one of the first really big female American authors. It's very interesting because in the UK they had like Jane Austen and the Bronte sisters and Elizabeth Gaskell and George Eliot, but there weren't a lot of famous female authors until Edith Wharton came around in America, which is just so fascinating. This book is dubbed as the Gossip Girl of the early 20th century, so it's about people on the Upper East Side of New York in the Victorian era, and it kind of is a look at how the American dream only operates for rich white men. It's kind of like a feminist critique of that, but it also is just a super fun story. Very gossip girly. So it's basically gossip girl, but with corsets. My last recommendation is one that it was hard to narrow down. So I only wanted to recommend one book by this author, although this author has so many amazing books out and they're usually historical fiction about Latin America. And that is Isabel Allende. I adore Isabel Allende. And the one I chose was the first book I ever read by her and probably her most famous one. And that is The House of the Spirits. This book is about the Chilean revolution and the overthrow of Salvador Allende, who was actually Isabel Allende's uncle, fun fact, but there's a twist to this revolution and the twist is that there is magic. So this book is magical realism and historical fiction. It is absolutely phenomenal and it's a really interesting look at Chilean society. I have also read it in Spanish. It's one of the few books that I've read in both languages that I speak and I actually love that I was able to read it in Spanish because it was originally written in Spanish. So even though I read the English first, I have an even more special place in my heart for this book just because I have read it in its original language. But like I said, whether you're reading it in Spanish or in English, it is one you don't want to miss. Those are all the historical fiction book recs that I have for you in today's video. Please let me know in the comments down below what historical fiction books you like to read and if you also are a nerd about history. If you did enjoy this video, I would love if you would consider subscribing. I'm Angela and the friend of all the good YA book recs and literary lifestyle tips and I create bookish videos every single week here on this channel. Whether you're new here or whether you're not new here, please give this video a thumbs up because it tells the YouTube algorithm that you'd like to see See more bookish videos in the future. As always, I will see you down in the comments and in my next video.